All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, the fifth in Gary Technologies Building Fluency webinar series. Uh, this week, uh, for those of you that have been following us um, the past few weeks, um, we've been going through various uh, various uh, methods and tools for dealing with BIM models and digital projects. Um, so like every week when we get started, uh, I'd like everyone to go over to their digital project V1R4 icon and double click and start up digital project. Uh, once you have that up and running, um, it may take a little time, um, I want you to go to digital project, project manager model, open that up and um, open up the model that we started last week. Uh, last week we started a a my annotations file uh, underscore your name um, dot, dot cat product. Uh, for those of you who um, who are starting this week, uh, you can just you can just try and follow along with the my annotations dot cat product. This includes um, most of what we're going to be going over today, uh, including the 4D uh, Microsoft Project integration. So um, once you've got once you've got that, take that, and drag that over into Digital Project, and get that opened up. All right. So I'm going to start the webinar. All right. So this week. Um, and the, f the fifth one that we're, we're dealing with this week um, is 4D scheduling. So how do we extend our 3D model, our 3D BIM model, um, into the fourth dimension, this case being time? So how do we link our model to a time model, um, in this case based in Microsoft Project? <clears throat> so. Uh, for those of you who ha haven't been attending these uh, these webinars, um, basically they're intended just as a starting point to get you up and running in Digital Project, especially as a as a BIM tool. Um, these are classroom format; uh, they're live demonstrations, so uh, you're welcome to ask questions um, during the sessions afterwards. Um, it's it goes. There's a lot of material. It goes fairly quickly, so. Um, I would encourage questions, but we may not have all the time to, to address them during the session, but certainly um, afterwards we can follow up um, with any questions you have. Um, but again, these are live demonstrations. These are not just like presentations of material, but really we're going to show you how things are built um, in a live model. So we're going to deal with um, with 4D simulation, and I just wanted to illustrate that um, by looking briefly at a project that Gary Technologies has been consulting on, the Lower Manhattan um, Construction Command Center. Um, I just want to point everyone, these are some images of uh, some of the work that's featured in an article online. Here's the article that, that, uh, that is uh, on, online here. And basically, it's it's just describing how Gary Technologies has been um, consulting with an organization um, that is managing many of the building projects in Lower Manhattan. And as you can see from some of the imagery, uh, it's dealing with with a lot of different building sites in the Lower Manhattan area, and specifically um, how those projects are going on schedule, how their schedules conflict with each other. Um, if you, uh, I'll send a link to everyone on this this article, but it gives a nice description of how they're using the 4D simulation to not only um, not only predict conflicts, um, so like physical conflicts between different billing sites, but also predicting just how much material and and um, it, one in one example uh, the number of of concrete trucks coming into the Lower Manhattan area, and and how that affects traffic and such. So this is this is a good um, illustration uh, and a good article to to look at in terms of 
um, how 4D simulation is actually applied um, in, in a real world case. So that's, um, I'll be sending a link out for everyone to, to take a look at that article, but I thought this is a good illustration of some of the subject matter that we're going to be going over this week. So this, um, and you can kind of recognize this is some of the uh, some of the the Freedom Tower area site. So this week, uh, the goals for this week, um, we're going to be creating um, a link between a Microsoft Project Schedule and Digital Project. Um, we're going to be taking the the activities um, from that Microsoft Project and populating them into the model tree so that you'll actually see how these activities um, become populated in our model tree in order to connect them to the, the model um, elements. Uh, we're going to be looking at taking those, those BIM components, the, the, um, the slabs, the, the curtain wall, and, and all the elements, and distributing them within the schedule activities. Um, and how we how we quickly and efficiently distribute those, and then how we're going to set up and run a simulation um, in, using the 4D uh, schedule. So how we can see the model being successively built up um, using the the schedule Microsoft project. So now that you have um, Digital project open. This is basically what we uh, looked at last week. Um, I just, for those of you that may not have attended or, or you just uh, were just watching last week, um, I just kind of want to quickly review based on looking at the tree here some of the things that we covered. Um, we looked at using the measure tool, so you can see down in the applications under measure, there's there's a little measure object. In that case, we measured this, this column slope. Um, then we kind of delve deeper into filtering our model based on the slopes of these columns. Um, we looked at grouping those columns together, creating groups. Um, we're going to look at that a little bit further today, um, creating groups. Uh, sorted views, um, which again used a used, uh, the information of the of the slope of the columns to rank the uh, the different the different slope factors. Color filter to filtering quickly filtering our, our model to to view the different elements based on some metadata property, some attribute property, um, and then finally we we got into pretty in depth um, Excel data sheet. And one thing I wanted to touch on. Uh, this week is where exactly does this data sheet exist? So when I double click, if I double click the the object in the tree, um, what I'll have is the, the the Excel data sheet will pop up, and and you'll notice that you know it's 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 an Excel file. Um, so I wanted to show briefly where exactly does that Excel file exists on your hard drive and how if you wanted to change the location how you could go about doing that. Um, this also relates to um, the Microsoft project file we're going to be dealing with today because it also um, in very much the same ma manner is, uh, is located on your hard drive in the same fashion. So here's, here's the, the Excel data sheet that we did that we generated last week. And you can see uh, the name of the actual file is Excel data sheet dot 297. So this is this is all saved on your um, your hard drive. And the pathway for that um, actual file, I've saved a, a little shortcut here. But if I expand and show you where this is located, it's under and it should be the same location for you because this is a default setting for the installation visual project. It should be local disk, uh, documents and settings. Um, in my case, it's under my username, uh, Nuri 